So behind me, you can see my wall easel. Uh, it's got done making it. It cost about twenty dollars. I used two one by four by eight foot boards, and then two one by two by eight foot pressure treated boards. Um, you can pick it all up at Home Depot for twenty dollars. And then it's also got three wing nuts, three lag bolts. Uh, I recommend like two and a half inch. Um, you could use three inch. Nothing smaller than two and a half though. They won't, they won't reach. Uh, and then a couple of washers. So all the hardware ended up costing a dollar, I think. And then I already had the other screws, so... If you had to buy those, it'd probably be another five, ten dollars max. So altogether, you could build it for less than thirty dollars. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of the parts, so that you can kind of get an idea of how I built it, and we will do that now. All three of the slides are built pretty much the same. The only difference is the bottom two are attached to one board instead of uh, being independent. So, uh, I'll kind of show you this top one, if I can get an angle on it. Okay, so if you look, you can see it's a T-shape, it's five and a quarter inches. Um, there's a leg bolt that goes through it. So the T just keeps it lined in the groove nicely keeps it from wobbling that's pretty much all the T is made to do I cut these strips here an inch each and then this is an inch so all together we got three inches I cut this down slightly so that it would have a space so that it can grab the front part and squeeze the rails okay so here's the front. Uh, this is the shelf that the actual canvas sits on. And I've taken two screws and screwed them through that so that the points are sticking out here and here. So they bite into the canvas a little bit on the edges. And then I screwed those to that. I also glued these. And then on the back side, I've put these strips here. And these ride on the outside of the rail. Okay. So that just goes in there. These fit through it. That doesn't move. And I get a washer. And I wing that. So once it's all in there. It moves up and down fairly easily. And then once you tighten the wing nut, it doesn't move at all. Okay, on the bottom, same setup, wing nut, and then the bracket. The difference, as I'll show you by backing up a little, is on this one, it's got two wing nuts. It's still got the same five and a half inch T in the back. So it's got two of these brackets. They have the screws sticking up through them too. So those grab the canvas. And then same thing here. These are four foot, four foot long, one inch wide, standard width, whatever it came. I think it's three quarters. So, and then this piece is three feet. See, it's three, three feet side to side for these two rails, here and here. And then the top one is just centered on those. Okay, so here's the wall brackets. I got them inch and a half screws in the top and bottom of each of these one inch rails. And then they're screwed into this pressure treated which is actually doubled up. I have two of them because uh, it's not as thick as, as these. So the, 
the back couldn't slide up and down because it was up against the wall. So I just doubled the, I doubled those and it works fine. So these brackets, they're just attached to the wall. I used uh, two and a half inch deck screws screwed into the studs um, on either side. So these are top and bottom 36 inches. Uh, and then you can see right here. These are also screwed in, uh, and those are just inch and a half wood screws. So they go top and bottom. And then the way I hung this, I built out the bottom frame and made it square because I was able to do that all together, no problem. So I attached top and bottom on these put this together both sides got this whole bottom frame together and then the top frame let me show you okay the top frame up there I put that and the uh, the two rails together I left the bottom not attached and the reason I did that is because I wanted to attach it square and level on the wall and it was rather large so I didn't want to try to carry the whole thing all put together into the house then I just put the bottom with a level put it on the wall leveled okay level here screwed those in and then I leveled these rails and once I knew those were level I screwed the bottom in not worried about whether or not the bottom is level because it doesn't matter as long as the rows are level and then the top I marked I put just the one screw in right there and then screwed in the top after I was sure that was level and then screwed the other screw in everything is spaced right lines up good moves freely good to go this is a painting I did a while ago Say I did it in sixteen or seventeen. Anyway, I did it on my old easel, the one I've made videos with before, and it just barely fit, and I mean barely fit. So that's one of the reasons I want to make this one. So I'm going to set this one up for if I was staying in. So this is going to be right up here, and that'll pretty much stay on it. So I want to bring this one up. Just a little bit. Probably right about there. So that's it. I think I could probably stand on that and it wouldn't move. I'm not going to try it because I don't know how strong the wall is. But it just sits on there. And then you just bring the top down. And I made it so that there's a, uh, a little backer on here, so that way I can push it back against that and put that down. So, I mean, I can, I'm leaning back right now with basically 180 pounds pulling on this, and it's going nowhere. So it's very sturdy. You can paint very hard on it. It's going to be fine. And that's it. So now it's at a height where I can easily paint it. If I want to sit down, I can actually loosen all three of these and just push it down. And now it's at a height where I can sit down. Now I can sit and paint. So that's pretty much it.